This is the Starter's 72 burning questions about the upcoming NBA season. Part two of nine starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to part two of the Starter's NBA season preview. Whether you're listening to the podcast, catching us on NBA TV, we're very, very happy to have you. I'm J.E. Skeets, and alongside me, as always, it's Tass Mellis. The NBA season around the corner. To my right, it's the starters blog editor, Trey Kirby. hey oh, hey oh, And finally, it's a man who we found out on last night's show has played 28 professional years of basketball. <laughs> it's the Aussie, Lee Ellis. Girls. Been playing since he's 10 years old. Can you believe it? 28 years old. I'm dating you, Lee. Sorry about that. What a career it's been. <laughs> what a career it's been. All right, we're picking up where we left off with our 72 burning questions about the upcoming NBA season. Some good ones in this batch. We're going to discuss the league's deepest bench, who's got it, and then a real fun one. Who has more left in the tank, Kobe or Wade? And tonight, TK takes to the hot seat for five burning questions. There it is. Look Looking at that thing. very Ooh. creepy. Pretty nervous. I hate the heat. Yeah, you do. Yeah. What will the Kerbidex? What will the Kerbidex be tonight? Tass still recovering from uh, being on the hot seat last night. But let's get to the questions. And as is the case with all of these, we're gonna weigh in with our answers. We want you to do the same. Jump on Twitter. Hashtag the starters. Lee, despite being a professional basketball player, reads every single tweet. That's how dedicated he is to this show. Guys, the first question for tonight. Question number nine, I guess overall. What's the worst slash weirdest? However you want to tackle it. Move of the offseason. I think the Pacers mishandling the Lance Stevenson situation, letting him go to the Charlotte Hornets, is mine. It makes no sense that they let Lance go. Obviously, their second best player. He meant so much to them, and the Pacers were short sighted in how they dealt with the situation. Maybe Lance Stevenson was a little prideful to get out of there because the Indiana Pacers were reportedly offering him about nine per for about four years, and Lance went and signed for about that number. Over two years guaranteed, though third team option with the Charlotte Hornets because he had some bad blood. Was Lance a little too proud? I don't care. You keep this guy around. I understand that they've got a lot of money locked up with Roy Hibbert, David West, George Hill for the next three years. But you've got to make this move. You have to keep him around. It's short-sighted in the fact that we know the salary cap is going up in the next couple of years. You don't want to pay over the tax this year. Who cares? You got to keep a talented guy like that around and it's unfortunate how that relationship worked out because he basically took the same amount of money and said, in less years as well, and said, hey, I'm betting on Lance. Two years from now, I don't care if the Charlotte Hornets don't pick up my option because I know I'm going to go sign a monster deal. In an offseason where Wings were getting paid monster bucks, Chandler Parsons, Gordon Hayward getting paid 16 per. It's a ridiculous number. It's ridiculous that Lance is only getting nine per. I know it hurts with Paul George obviously going down. I was going to say it got yeah. much worse there yeah. in August. They but compounded like you, with a compound fracture for sure. Yeah. Like you mentioned, Tess, that relationship seems to have soured. And to me, this kind of seems like the Pacers are playing for Lance Stevenson for their season collapsing at the end of the year last year yeah. because they brought everybody back except for Lance Stevenson. Even the fact that Frank Vogel now has a long extension kind of points to the people here now weren't the problem. Look right. at the one guy who's gone. And that, to me, is kind of a strange step for a franchise to take because he was the one who made them as good as they were last year, just being that kind of random piece who could explode. They oh, were negotiating with him, though. Yeah. I, I wonder if they just didn't want to pay the dollars. But what, what that's the thing. It. They made him what was a reasonable offer, what he accepted in the, in the end with Charlotte. So what else could they have done to keep him? Well, the relationship was bad, obviously. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah but... Uh, I mean, he deserved more money. I mean, we talked about last year. But the market for him wasn't out there. It wasn't there. Teams weren't there throwing money. And when the Pacers made him that offer, it sat on the table for weeks. I think Lance Charlotte Stevenson is this proud that he wants to get paid in two years from now. That he says, $9 million per for this guy. Yeah. When you're paying Chandler Parsons a 15 plus, Gordon Hayward's getting 16 million. Lance Stevenson's looking in the mirror. You know, he is that type of guy that he wants but, to get paid at 24 years old. He knows at 26, 27, he thinks anyways that he's going to get right. paid way, way more. But why didn't anyone come in with a you know, it better could, offer then? Yeah, it, it could have it could have soured in the playoffs as well. I mean, yeah. they, oh, they, I, they look like they were sort yeah. of distance in the playoffs. It didn't seem like Lance was on great terms with yeah. everybody. But I think the market sets the value for these guys. I mean, Chandler Parsons, whether you like it or not, is a $15 million player because that's what the Mavericks Because someone wanted to pay him that's that. That's right. And Lance is only worth $9 million a year and no one wanted to give him three years guaranteed other than the Indiana Pacers. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's a tough situation because he was. He was a borderline all-star last year. He was a fantastic player for them. But obviously, his relationship yep. and his reputation soured so much, teams didn't want to touch it, him. I can't wait to see 
how Lance plays oh, man. in Charlotte there. And it's not like he's going to be the best player on that team because there is, of course, Al Jeffrey, Borderline All-Star, Campbell Walker, so mm -hmm. sort of a leader of that team. But he's real close to being the leader. And can he really up those? I mean, you saw how important with that graphic there, how important he was to the Pacers yeah. just across the board. But scoring the basketball and, and staying level-headed enough, which is tough to say with fine. Lance Most there, will be, fine. will be very interesting. <laughs> what about you, Lee, though? Uh, your worst... Weirdest move of the offseason. This is both. It's Jason Kidd going to Milwaukee. Oh, this was strange. This, the way this came about, like there was rumours that Jason Kidd went to the uh, Brooklyn head office and said, listen, I want all the power in the world. And then the next minute, he's gone to Milwaukee as a head coach. And Larry Drew wasn't even aware about this. Right. Larry Drew was at the press conference for Jabari Parker when he arrived. And he was, like, as far as he knew, he was going to be the coach. John Hammond, the GM from Milwaukee, apparently didn't even know about it. He thought his job was in danger. Jason Kidd's had one year as a coach. And I think it should have been a red flag for the Milwaukee Bucks to say Brooklyn couldn't get rid of him quick enough. <laughs> they said, hey, we want Jason Kidd as your coach. And they said, you can take him. I think they got two second round picks in the end for him. But I bet if Brooklyn had really pushed hard for it, uh, Milwaukee would have just said, you know what? We don't, we don't want him at all. Uh, excuse me, Brooklyn would have said we don't want him at all. And I think that that's a bad sign. He was there in Brooklyn last year. They were expected to contend. I know they made the second round of the playoff. But they weren't really ever in contention. Jason Kidd, he's got a reputation as a player leaving a trail of destruction that's wherever true. he's gone. Yeah. He's had one year as a coach and now he's left that situation badly. So I don't like it for Milwaukee this season. It's but you look shocking. at the success that the Nets did have. It was when they went small after Brooke Lopez got injured. And with the roster he has in Milwaukee, it seems to fit Jason Kidd's style, what he would like to do. I mean, he was a point guard. He loved to pass the ball, play up tempo. And that seems to be what they're going to do. That works better with the Bucks. you know, a bunch of young guys who can run all day that's... than a bunch of old Nets. It <laughs> might that just be year. the case of a much better fit. You know, in terms of wow. not only... But it's going to be so different. Well, not only in terms of personnel, guys. but yeah. also that, the, the, I mean. the management he as well. Had, he had experienced veterans like Kevin Garnett and Joe Johnson, and they've kind of now made comments in the press. Yeah. We didn't they, practice. They yeah. mocked him. They mocked Jason yeah. Kidd. So now he's got young, impressionable guys who are at really early stages of their career where they really need to be developed. But that might be better for him to coach these new guys, these well, young guys, <laughs> not guys that he's played yeah. with for 15 years. You know, maybe, maybe it's a different maybe. scenario. But, but again, be very based, on, based on what we've seen of him as a coach, I don't think it's a good situation for Milwaukee. What about you, Trey? Weirdest, worst move of the offseason? I couldn't really figure out what the Lakers were doing all offseason, and it kind of started with Phil Jackson. Signed with the Knicks, and everything from there has gone downhill. Powell want, or Kobe wanted Powell to stay. They are best friends. Powell left, said it was the hardest thing in the world to tell Kobe. They missed out on a ton of free agents, and then they just started signing power forwards. They brought in Ed Davis. They brought in Carlos Boozer. They Boos. drafted Julius Randle. You can't even really pick what their starting lineup is going to be, and it all stems from Kobe having that gigantic contract. So now that they have to build around that, it's like what the Mavericks did with Dirk. They just sign a lot of guys to one-year deals. Next year, they go for it again. A lot, yeah, well, that's, I sort of think, what they're doing here. Yeah. I mean, they're looking to make a splash in a couple of years here with a bunch of salary cap space. And you're L.A., you're the storied franchise in the Lakers, and maybe you go get two or three really, really big names. They're sort of pooching this season, yeah. really, because it is strange there, guys like Carlos Boozer and, and Jeremy Lin. You know, if you have a healthy Nash and Kobe, I mean, we're going to get to Kobe in a little bit, but, like, It'll be interesting to see what they can still give them, those old guys there. I'm excited for Boozer and Kobe together, though. I just think that's going to be a great relationship. It's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> they better be interesting because they're going to be on national TV 29 times yeah. this year. Ah, uh -huh, Booz. We should count how many N1s we get. Oh, okay. Get the microphone on Carlos Boozer. <laughs> N1! Give me that! I'm not, my pick is not really worse, but it was a little weird. It's smaller than what you guys are going with, but it's Jody Meeks signing with the Pistons for over $6 million a year for the next three seasons. And this sort of, they just, Detroit paid so high right out of the gate mm. with this. And it's not like Jody. a perfect Stan Van guy. I yeah. get that, I get that. They want to play exactly like Stan Van had with the Magic, with Dwight in the middle. They want to try and, you know, recreate that with Drummond and then surround with a bunch of players just like they're Orlando. And he's a great player, but again, I think this is still a little too high. I think you see other guys, what they make. Reddick, Crawford, Kevin Hart, you know, they're all in the vicinity. Even Wesley Matthews not making that much more. And he's like, look, Meeks is just a specialist. Yeah. He's just a shooter. I think it was a little odd how much he makes there. Again, and he's a career months. high from three for him last year, whereas yeah. these guys, Reddick, Crawford, and Kevin Martin, have years of putting up crazy three-point shooting numbers. Right. Whereas Jody makes it's like, is he going to do it again? You have to hope so. Right, but you say that it's a high number, but he's the 18th highest paid shooting guard. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it's Fair. not it's not high, and he had the seven best three-point percentage last year. He's great. He's, he's a great shooter, him. but again, they just a so lovely. quickly out of the gate there. But maybe Stan Van knows what he's doing. Again, chime in, hashtag the starters, worse slash weird.
weirdest move of the offseason. Let us know. We got to take a break, pay the bills here. But when we return, who has more left in the tank? OG Kobe Bryant or OG Dwayne Wade? Don't go anywhere. You're watching the starters. Back to the starters, 72 burning questions about the upcoming NBA season. We're at question 10. Let's get right to it. Guys, which team has the league's deepest bench? The champions, the San Antonio Spurs, and that bench that won them the NBA title. Scott, you know, think about what this bench is. I mean, Patty Mills checks into the game, subs on, <laughs> he runs up to the three-point line, he sprints <laughs> from backcourt to the three-point line and fires shots because it's effective, because it's amazing, because the coaches work with them to do that. I think these coaches are spectacular in all these roles that they have pegged for their guys. I think not only do they get the best bench award, they get the best coaching staff award. Oh, wow. I, I think their coaching staff, we've got the first female full-time assistant coach, Becky Hammond. She's, she's already got, got the stand staff. Yeah, she's yeah. got the pop, angry arms crossing <laughs> down pat already. But Don't add the beer. <laughs> but last year's staff, Jim Boylan, Ime Udoka, Chip England, Sean Marks, I mean, they, they do a masterful job with all their sort of role players and it, it's a spectacular bench. It is, but I mean, it's tough though. This is tough to argue. This yeah. is won the champion. Because is it the players in, on that bench or is it that that exactly the just the from the top down, from pop down mm -hmm. that system? And yeah. you could almost it feels like with the Spurs, you can plug anyone in. You yeah. could plug Lee Ellis in there and he's somehow gonna score <laughs> ten points per game. Yeah, yeah. But so I know it goes hand in yeah. hand, the deepest bench. Yeah, but that's why like, I'm giving them yeah. the award. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same award. Up, and then they do pick up guys who don't really make an impact. Tracy McGrady didn't really stick around with the Spurs. Yeah. Shannon Brown didn't stick around with the Spurs. Steven but Jackson, the guys that are there. Work. Yeah, exactly right. It is a system, but the players that they have have been through the finals. They've been proven and tested in the finals, and they're gonna be better this year, because like you're saying, they're gonna have to plug Corey Joseph in for Patty Mills to start the season. And they're not gonna skip probably be great. So you're a Agreeing with Tass, yeah. I'm imagining Spurs fan number one over here agrees that the <laughs> deepest bench is the Spurs yeah. as well. I think it has to be, and I think what you're also going to see now is a lot of other teams try to manage minutes of guys so that they get more production out of the bench, sure. so that they're fresher, because that was the thing about San Antonio. They won the championship last year fresh as anything. I think we mm -hmm. saw Oklahoma City, they ran out of gas against them in the Western Conference Finals, and then again... Yeah, but like, you can only do that if your bench guys yeah, come in there and don't give up leads, and yeah. suddenly you got to go back to the right. starters. That's yeah, but, what but he, up. But Pop forces them. I mean, whatever I happens yeah. with those guys on the floor, he goes with it. I mean, they have no choice. Yeah. They are going to do it. Uh, but, but, it, but that's the thing. Pop's end goal is to be fresh at the most important time of the season, mm -hmm. and that is obviously in the finals, in the playoffs. But you're right. And people are going to emulate it. Mark yeah. Cuban said it. He said, I mean, we're going to do a lot of things that yeah. the Spurs did. And exactly. we're going to do some weird things, just like the Spurs did, with Patty Mills who beelines to the three-point line yeah. and just make shots and, and the thing about as well with the Spurs is when they are, occasionally do get blown out, Pop does says, right, oh, you guys come off, and I'm just going to throw out the other guys. He doesn't concede the game necessarily. He expects those other guys to go out there yeah. and compete as hard as they can. Yeah, he does but he knows that those other guys, I mean, even Matt Bonner still at this stage of his career, still has a role to play on that team. It's one thing for teams to say, oh, yeah, let's do what the Spurs do. It's another <laughs> yeah. for have your sure. bench yeah. give you 44 points yeah. a game like yeah. the Spurs do. I mean, it's not that easy. I'll play devil's advocate, and I'll go with the Bulls as the deepest bench in the league. Now, um, they're deep. They're deep. This is a good team. Of course, Taj Gibson could have been a six-man of the year. Kurt there, Captain Kirk. Aaron Brooks coming in now is that DJ Augustine, Nate Robb, where yep. Nate, uh, Tom Thibodeau always has like this yes. second back of <laughs> explosive guard. Aaron Brooks could do that. But really, the last two guys at the end is why I'm hanging my hat on maybe this being the deepest bench. It's all how much you expect from Eminem this year. Rodich <laughs> and Dougie McBuckets. Yeah. I mean, if they are the stars, a lot of people expect them. They could both could be, yeah. then it's a very deep squad in both of those shooters coming in and stretching the floor. And given this Bulls team, which desperately needs some offense. Well, yeah, and that's the only real reason I hesitate to pick the Bulls as the deepest bench is because you don't know what you're getting because these guys fair. are both rookies and the Spurs have gone through it. They just have shown that they are sure. going to be a great bench. The Bulls probably will be a great bench, just need to see it. This is a question we asked last week on Facebook, and we'll get to it later in the show, who you guys think the results from that poll. Some other teams, too. I mean, the Cavaliers, the Clippers, uh, you know, a lot of people, when we did that vote, throwing other teams out there as well. But let's get to the next question, because I love this one. Oh, it's a great one. Guys, who has more left in the tank? As simple as that, Kobe or Wade? It's hard betting against Kobe Bryant. Yes, it you is. You never bet I'm against not. Kobe Bryant. But you never bet against the old Kobe Bryant. This is a Kobe Bryant we've never seen before. Kobe Bryant has never been a 36-year-old that's played six games over the last 18 months. Mm. This is just 
so different for Kobe. And we've seen him in the preseason. The fadeaway looks nice. We're going to see him shoot that a billion times this season. Mm -hmm. But it's just an age thing for me. I mean, they're four years apart. So you're going Wade. I'm going Wade. Yeah, they're four years apart. It's strictly a numbers thing. Kobe's going to have a good year. But Wade at 32 compared to Kobe Bryant at 36 years of age. That's the biggest thing for me. And Wade knows. He signed a two-year deal because he knows he's going to sign another contract. This guy is not done. Kobe's a lot closer to being done. Hey, and Dwayne Wade went paleo this summer. He's on Pinterest looking up his recipes, keeping things very carb-free. He's going to be a lot better because he's, he's going to be lighter. That has to be good on your knees, and he's had a knee that's been bothering him for 10 years. I expect him to be a lot more explosive this year, and I think handling the ball being the main initiator means his shooting isn't that big of a deal. Nobody's really sagging off him because he'll hit the 18. Lee, do you agree with these guys? Does Wade have more left in the proverbial tank than, uh, than Kobe? If you'd asked me before the finals last year, I probably would have agreed with him. But I think what we saw in the finals is his body really struggles to keep up with demand when it's so intense. He's got chronic knee issues. Yeah, and, and, and the that's the difference is, that's with Kobe. That's why he lost Wade. Yeah, yeah no, that's true. But like, Kobe had his devastating yeah. injuries but had time to rehab them. The, th the thing about Kobe is I think this injury actually is somewhat of a blessing in disguise because even though he hasn't really played much basketball for the last 18 months, Months. He hasn't put those extra miles yeah. in his legs as well. So Come I think on, an injury at 35 is an injury at 35. Yeah, but I, no but I think, for, no, I think it is for Kobe because he hasn't been pounding uh, his knees and his body on the court for these two last, last two years when the Lakers haven't been particularly good. I think he's going to come back now. He realises at this stage of career he hasn't got a lot left. So I think he's... Kobe averaged 27 points per game in his he's last full season. And, and, he's going to score in this is, year. He's yeah. going to score in, uh, the year after that. Yeah. But Wade's going to have a but, longer career. But Wade, Wade simply can't play back-to-back -back situations like he has done in the past. He said that. Even though he says this year he doesn't want to do the same maintenance program, but I think that's crazy for him to contemplate. Yeah, but the thing with Wade is, I, I know we look at the regular season last year and we say he only played 54 games, but that was a plan, as you mentioned. No, well, I don't he think played, it was that much of a plan. He played 74 games. He didn't play 54 games. He yeah. played 54 plus 20 and yeah. if the championship was on April 15th some Tuesday against the Detroit Pistons of just making up a team that he would play 82 <laughs> games to get there because he can Kobe Bryant hasn't been on the basketball you're good, you're I don't know nuts. how you, you are can nuts if you're ready against Kobe Bryant he's though. scoring 20 plus Wayne this year. Wade no he's doubt. got his socks his capris he's got other things in his life Kobe all he has is basketball and all he has look it's not gonna happen this year but it's getting that ring number six mm -hmm. that's it and sure he's gonna pass some guys on the all-time scoring list as well that, well, he's just, I mean, Kobe's just, he's so much more zeroed into me than But Wade. I like the fact, I mean, that, that Trey brought up, that Dwayne Wade is going to embrace this sort of leadership role. This is, again, this is new hat for him yeah. because it's back to 2009. This is new. This is fresh. This is something that he's going to embrace. He's gotten lighter. He feels good. He looks great. He's eating salads and stuff. Who's lighter, <laughs> Dwayne Wade or, Kobe, or uh, LeBron James? Everyone's yeah, losing man. weight here. It's a new thing. All right. Chime in on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Who's got more left in the tag? Is it Kobe? Is it Wade? Wade, you can just use the hashtags for those guys. All right, when we return, Trey Kirby climbs into the hot seat to answer such questions as who's the most overrated team heading into the season? Yikes, that's a full load of Come on back. Welcome back to the starters. You can see him there. Trey Kirby has taken his seat in the hot seat for questions 12 through 17. Yeah, he's pretending he's hot. He's not sweating yet, though. So let's get it a little hotter up in here for these questions. Oh, yes. Oh, nice. The interrogation. Feels like game one of the finals over here. The interrogation <laughs> starts now, Trey Kirby. Question one for you here. What's the most overrated team going into the season? I really hate to say this, but I do think it's the Chicago Bulls. There's just a lot of unknowns this season. You don't know if Rose is going to stay healthy. You don't know if Noah's going to stay healthy. You don't know if Paul Gasol is going to stay healthy. They have a lot of guys to get hurt, and they're all going to play a ton of minutes. Not to mention the bench. They're relying on two guys who've never played in the NBA before to be huge parts of their offense off the bench. There's a lot of questions to say that they are a title contender, I think. And that must hurt you as a Bulls fan. To yeah, it really does hurt me, but also I think it's going to end up. Thank you for being them. honest in the hot seat, though. All right, next one. Which NBA player's haircut would you most want to have? I think Alfred Payton has the coolest hair. I, agree. I think Kenneth Fareed has the prettiest hair. But I would personally go with Jeremy Lamb's hair. I love the little frizz he's got. I love how it's a little bit browner on the top. He always dyes it during the summer, and I just think I could really pull this look off. I don't have quite as big eyes as his because I got these little slit eyes. Oh, there you go. But it would right. be pretty it, it, good. It looks exactly the same as your hair. <laughs> yes. Why do you think I chose it? Yeah, I, that makes sense. All right. Frosted like tips like are back, tear, though, I heard. Next question. Frosted tips. <laughs> Who will perform at the NBA All-Star Game in New York? 
I think this is a lock, but I'm going with Jay-Z and Beyonce. If they can make it to Christmas, they can make it to February. It's been 10 years since Beyonce performed by herself at the All-Star Game. It's in New York and Brooklyn. I don't think there's anybody else you could choose for this. Didn't you see Lady Gaga putting in work with the Spurs last week in Berlin? <laughs> <laughs> I did see that. I guess she's getting her warm-ups in. I don't yeah, know. She's a New Yorker as well. She's I think it's going to be Gaga. I like the Jay-Z Beyonce pick. All right, question four here. Which teammates are least likely to get along? I think the Chris Paul and Spencer Hawes union is going to be a disaster this year because Chris Paul's the kind of guy who likes to yell at his teammates, and Spencer Hawes is the kind of guy who gets yelled at a lot for <laughs> chucking, you know? I mean, he shot 40% from three last year, but it's a little bit of a Byron Mullins scenario where if he's open near the three-point line, it's going up, and Chris Paul loves to be angry. Final one. I love this one. Chris Douglas Roberts is bringing back the short shorts. John Stockton is happy, but we want to know what's another bygone look that you'd like to see return? I think these can go hand in hand because about at the beginning of the 2000s, there was a resurgence in tall socks. And I'm seeing tall socks coming back. Your Walt Williams, your oh, Kerry Kittle, okay. Ben Horn, Nick Van Exel. It was a great look in the early 2000s. The leggings have kind of taken hold again. They're kind of going down three quarters. I think you bring back tall white socks. It is a smooth look. There it is. <laughs> Trey Kirby on the hot seat. Turn Hold them up socks here. up, guys. Helping us get to our 72 burning question. We got to take one more break, but when we return, Ginobili! The fans weigh in on who has the league's deepest bench. Is it the Spurs? Is it the Bulls? We'll hear from you when we come back. You're watching the starters. Back to the starters. Earlier in the show, guys, we debated which team has the league's deepest bench. The three of you guys going with the Spurs. I went with the Bulls, try to make a case for them. Well, we threw it on our Facebook page last week. The results were in. You guys have spoken. Between the two teams we're debating, you see it there. The Spurs get 47% of the vote for the league's deepest bench. Bulls pulling in 18%. Other votes for Clips and the Nuggets and the Raptors and so on. Thanks, everyone, for chiming in. One comment I wanted to highlight was Joe Greenwich, who had a great point. He says, the Sixers will have 12 to 15 bench players on the roster. That's pretty deep. Super Excellent deep. point. And that is a good point, Joe. <laughs> All right, coming up tomorrow, part three of our season preview. A few of the questions we'll tackle. Most overrated player in the league. Who will make their first All-Star game? And who will lead the league, Lee, in very solid plays? So get your thumbs ready and come on back tomorrow. Thanks for joining us today, folks. And remember, real babies might make a person's life better, but actor babies never make a TV show any better. Race the day, people. It's true. We're off to a weird start with these. <laughs>